what the Bible do to us when we read it. It is the word of God that has made us to know all these things that God has carried our pain, our sicknesses, and put them on Jesus. It is the word of God that has recreated us. It is the word of God that saved us. It is the word of God that makes us masters of Satan. The topic for today, what the Bible do to us when we read it. Tell never say, what the Bible do to us when we read it. This is what we want to talk about. Because everybody, every household has a Bible, almost, let me put it that way. Almost every house has the Bible, but what does the Bible do to us when we read it? If we know, I believe, everybody will be reading his Bible every day. Can never say, if, if, we, if everybody knows what the Bible do when, to them, when they read it, everyone will be reading his Bible every day. But because we don't know, that's why we are inconsistent, we read it, sometimes we don't read it, this. I understand, I don't blame you. It's because you don't know. Assume you knew what the Bible do to you when you read it, you will read it every day. You will read it while washing dishes. You just open there and read Psalm 95. While you are washing dishes, oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let's shout joyfully for the rock of our salvation. You start singing, hallelujah, hallelujah. When you finish washing dishes, you go again. You go to Psalm. You just go and say, ah, Psalm 20. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. Oh, my Lord, Father, answer me and defend me. You are wiping your dishes now. Father, Father, defend me, Lord. Defend me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Tell anybody, say, assume, assume I, know I know what the Bible do to me when I read it. I'll be reading it all the time. While I'm working, while I'm driving, you even put your audio Bible or listen to a preaching while you drive. If the preacher is quoting the Bible, explain, expounding the scripture, you'll be doing that. Even when you go to toilet, you will enter there with your Bible and sit there, not with your cell phone, and begin to sit there. Then you, you know you can sit for 30 minutes because as you are relieving yourself, your cell phone need Instagram, Facebook, there, the gudu, this elevator, gudu, gudu, yeah? And something has occupied your mind. You are reading email in the day, checking Facebook and this and everything. It's because you don't know. We don't blame you. Assume you knew. Oh. What it does to you. John 15, verse 3. Hebrews 4, 4 I mean. Verse 12, Psalm 19, verse 8, Psalm 119, verse 9 and 11, and last verse 105, Ephesians 4, verse 23, 24, 25. Jeremiah 15, verse 16. When you put all this scripture together, they will give you one answer after the other. You will begin to know what happens to you when you read the Bible, what it does to you. 
among many, we just quoted a few for now. Let's, because of time, go to John 15, verse 3. Listen to verse 3 with that New King James Version. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Let's read this one. This is NLT. It says, well, one, two, three, let's go. Look at that. Listen to that. When we read the Bible, it cleans us. It purifies us when you read it. So you can imagine, if you're not reading the Bible, your spiritual condition is bad. Tell me, say, if you don't read the Bible, for long, your spiritual condition is very bad. Because if you become clean by reading it, if you don't read it, what happens to you? That's a question. You know, many of us here, just one day without bathing, brushing your teeth, taking a shower, those who don't have a shower, even entering bas bascom, just for one day, you don't bath. You know by the end of the day, the smell. Second day, no bath. Oh my God. Third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, seven days, you have no bath. Oh my God. You have not put Colgate in your mouth. Oh my God. Three meters is enough to stand and talk to you. No hugs. So, as a Christian, if you are already clean because of the word you have read, you are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. God's word cleans us when we read it. It purifies us. It searches us out. Hebrews 4.12 It guides us. Psalm 119 verse 9 verse 11 and verse 105 It guides us. It heals us. When you read it, it heals us because it has healing power. It purifies us because it has purifying power. That is why I said to many of us, we don't blame you. You don't know. If you knew, you will read your Bible every day. If you know what it does to you, each time you open and read, that it guides you. It purifies you. The first thing it does is cleaning. It cleans you. Then guiding, purifying. Many people say they are not happy. They have everything, but they are not happy. They are married, but they are not happy. They are having good jobs, but they are not happy. They have money, but they are not happy. They have children, but they are not happy. Let's go to that Psalm 19, verse 8. Psalm 19, verse 8. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, 
enlightening the eyes. Listen to that. The statues of the Lord are right. Rejoicing what? Rejoicing what? And you say you are not happy. When you read it, it rejoices the heart. You believe your car, your new car, is going to rejoice your heart. The marriage is going to rejoice your heart. Yes, for a moment, for a time. A car will begin to make you happy for a time. A new house will make you happy for a time. A new job, even promotion, we become joy at that time. Oh my God, I'm promoted. First salary, appointment letter, new contract, yes. But look at this. Read it. Can you just imagine? This means you can have joy without having a new contract, without a new job without having a promotion, without having children in the house, maybe you don't, doctors are telling you that they don't see anything or your chupa, this and everything. Look what the word of God can be doing. Giving you joy. In the midst of all the things you, are, you, you, you lack, give you this. Because many of us have all these things, but we still lack what? Joy. While we have all these things. That's why I say, I don't blame you when you don't read your Bible. It's because you don't know. Others, they are ignorant. I don't blame you. How are you ignorant? How are you ignorant? I don't blame you. How are you ignorant? How are you ignorant? So I don't blame you. I don't blame you. But assume you know that Joy can come from this way alone. Just reading it, it gives joy. People see you happy, but there's nothing to be happy about on the outside because people are used to material things, things they can touch and feel to bring happiness. But they are surprised that, ah, you are happy, but there's nothing this. This is the way it. The precept of the, the stature are right, they bring joy to their heart. Ubonemoto, I two mates, as in a nix. I two mates. Radi child young boy, I be local pate. Radi child, Mkwa local pate. Madi child. I don't blame. I understand. You are ignorant. What heal we? God's word searches us out and finds us. There is nothing hidden from him, this living word. Hebrews 4, verse 12. Let's read. From Hebrews 4, verse 12. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joins and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. It judges the thoughts and the attitude of the heart. It searches. Uh -huh. Verse 13. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Yes. God's word searches us out and finds us. Nothing is hidden from him, this living word. If we know that God has put our sickness, has carried our sicknesses and disease and put them on Jesus, we will, we will not be carrying them ourselves. Isaiah 53, verse 4. If we know that, we will not be carrying our sickness. People are carrying their sicknesses upon them because they don't know that God has carried them away and put them on Jesus. They decided to carry them. Go to Isaiah 53, verse 4. Isaiah 53, verse 4. 
Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. Are you listening to that? So when you don't read your Bible, you will not know this. That is why you will carry your pain. Your suffering, you are carrying them upon yourself instead of giving them to God because God has taken everything and put them on Jesus. Assume um, Baba with prostate cancer did not come here. Come here. They did not, if the people that invited him, they realized that God has carried all these things. When we take people to this ministry, we see with medical report this, if these people did not know, they would not invite Baba to come here. A boy was born with asthma from birth. Now he injured the hand. The hand is healed immediately. The asthma went away. Go back, daddy, your future is bright. Or they say this brought strength to work hard. Somebody who does not know him, you know, he telling him that the future is bright. Already he has been selected everywhere, national, I mean, provincial team, this, da 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 da, da all this. He was caught. <sighs> Soon, will you know? Look how many things you don't know God has done for you. Why? Because we don't read our Bible. We don't know what it does to us. It enlightens us. It says, the precepts of the Lord bring joy to the heart and brings light to our eyes. When you read the Bible, From Yana to Yana. <laughs> Tell me from Yana. From this to this. Assume. It searches the thoughts and the intentions of the heart when you read it. When you read the Bible, you will know the Mercedes Benz you're looking for, the mansion you're looking for, is for the glory of God or for yourself, when you read it. Then you will realize that's why God does not give you. But you don't read the Bible to search, to search your motive, your intention. Then you realize why God has not answered the prayer of Range Rover, Mercedes, private jet, double story house, promotion, is because the intentions, the motive are wrong. When you read it, it will tell you, let all be for the glory of God. But you, you, you just want to prove to somebody, I don't want to prove to somebody, I don't want to prove to somebody. When you go to the garage to look for a car, the motive in your heart, you look at the car, you say, hmm, <laughs> Do you see about yeah? When you go to a big house like they are selling out, whether it's a brand new house or it's a house that has people but they are about to leave, when you enter there, you are looking for the main bedroom, Usheba. You come out, the children's bedroom. Okay, is this the children? Oh, okay. Honey, you see it. Mm, okay. Mm, baby, you see this one. Mm, yes, okay. You go to the balcony. We picture out your coffee. Look at your motive. Boomer, boomer, boomer. They will be seeing you standing on the balcony drinking coffee. Boomer, look at your motives. Look at your intention, are all wrong. Instead of saying, wow, when I get here, oh my God, I will see the sky and say thank you, Jesus, every morning. Hey, God is not part of it. God is not what? You go to a garage, you see this car, it opens. Already from there. How you see we are How na lechel? Oga nunga kiti ana kala keshi ni ane beki bula ya na. Hey 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 hey. 
Look at your motives, your intentions. God is not part of it. You are saying by the time I enter the location, I open it. They will see me now. You have expensive sandals. You don't have a car. You put them. Oh, God. May God forgive you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Human being, I want to help you to correct your way. So that what you are looking for, what you desire, should be for the same reason. God wants them for you. Everything you want should be for the reason God wants them to have for you. God wants you to be in a comfort environment. God wants you to worship Him better. God wants you to appreciate Him better. You are busy doing for people outside, not for God. Look, when I go to people's houses, if I happen to get a chance, the first place as they are showing me the house, I want to see where you pray. That's the, as we move, yes, as we move. Because when we are leaving the house, I want to offer prayer. It will be good that uh, you take me to your prayer place so that I can kneel down with you there and offer a prayer of blessing and ask God to rest his blessing in that place. Even if it's a two-room place, kitchen, bedroom, or one-room place, at least you don't even have to say, this is where I pray. I will see where you put your Bible, where you have your, your, your spiritual items, everything that you use that as a point of contact and everything this. I said, oh, this is where you pray, your pillow there, yeah, this is where I kneel this. Ah, when we finish, I will want to go with you there, we go on our knees, and I offer prayer to the heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. yes. It is the word of God that has made us to know all these things that God has carried our pain, our sicknesses and put them on Jesus. It is the word of God that has recreated us. It is the word of God that saved us. It is the word of God that makes us masters of Satan. Mark 16 17 is saying, in my name they will cast out demons. If not Mark 16, 17, I would not know this. That God's word make us masters of Satan. Masters over Satan and circumstances. In my name. It is the word of God that has made us to know all these things. In that John 15, verse 7 to 8, the Bible makes us to understand in those two verses that the word dwelling in us is equivalent to Christ living in us. The word dwelling in us is the lordship of Christ in us. Meaning, when the word of God dwells in us, is equal to Christ living in me. That is why I can go to a person with cancer and say in the name of Jesus. Why? Because the Bible has told me that uh, the word dwelling in you is equal to Christ living in you. So the more word of God you have in you, the more Christ you have. The less word you have, the less Christ you have. So I read my Bible every day because I know that the more the word dwelling in us, the more I know what it says. The more I know what he say, and I don't say, the, the more Christ increase in me. The best way to see the word of God working in our lives and producing fruit, working in our families, our home, our career, 
and producing fruit, it is when we practice it, when we do what it says. That is the best way to see the word producing fruit in your life, your career, your marriage, your business, your days. It is by practicing it. It is by doing what it says it produces. Yes. Because they are word hearers, good talkers, mere listeners, and not doers of the word in every church. Can never say they are word hearers, good talkers, mere listeners, but not doers in every church. Yes. It's not that when the church is full, Everybody is a doer. No, there are some groups there which are just mere listeners. They just listen, but they will never do what they hear. They're just good talkers. When they talk, oh my God, when they say Emmanuel, it's like they, they studied English in Harvard University. The Emmanuel is different from my him. My mom. It's not this short one of ours. Good talkers, word hearers. Mere listeners, but never doers of the word. Our spiritual eyes must be focused on God, who is unseen, by looking at his word. Can never say our spiritual eyes must be focused on God, who is unseen. By looking at his word. Yes. Do you know you have spiritual eyes? Oh, God. Everybody has spiritual eyes. Spiritual ears. Spiritual mind. Are you listening? Yes. When I go to a person and tell him that uh, this is the problem, this is this, prostitute this, whatever. There's a problem in the bedroom, whatever this, any of this. It's my spiritual eyes. It's not this physical eye. Look at the testimony you listen to. I go to this man and tell him that they've given these women this, and I touch him and he falls, boom, on the floor. This I see the physical beauty, the attire, the this. He cannot see more than that. But our spiritual eyes can see what the physical eye cannot see. Our eyes are a blessing to God. You see these eyes are a gift. Are you listening? To help you in this physical world. Our physical eyes, that is, our eyes, our ears, our mouth and heart should be tuned into God's word. Because God's word is eternal. We must eat the word. Are you listening to me? Tell never say you must eat the word. Tell yourself I must eat the word. How? By reading it and meditating on it daily. Jeremiah 15, verse 16. Read it for us. Jeremiah 15, verse 16. When your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight. For I bear your name, Lord God Almighty. Mm. Read again. When your words came, I ate them. When your words came, I ate them. We need to eat the word, Bazalwan. Born again. Christian, we need to eat the word. Lintelia ji wale lona. Ha si di jotsa le na tseli di steak, di pizza, di di salad this. 
le lentšwe le a jewa you are used to eat salad meat bacon and egg chicken and beef this and that cheese and macaroni this and this hey hey this hey fish and this this even the word can be eaten this word Galatia lentule i eat this word how by reading it every day and meditating on it that's how i eat it it is food for my soul if you eat three times a day your cost me as a christian you should also at least eat the word of god once a day at least that's a minimum not at all a day pass without even you have not read a psalm tell never say if i eat three times a day a cost me i must at least eat the word once a day at least when we say at least rausama go rausama go rautusa go rausama ra bona go tswa una le spiritual laziness o go tswa so ra le zama just to help you somewhere there at least once a day slowly slow reading you don't read to preach to anybody no 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 you are feeding yourself you are enlightening yourself this abu ha you are doing what enlightening yourself o tlosa bo ba re tlisa bo tleba not a tleba mata ba re gasego ya ba re mata tleba gasego you look wise but you are like this o se ba gala le botlhale ba tlo kwalegile many people when you we meet them they look so but listen when they talk look what they do you see i am told you five you are you listening to me yes wa bona go motho e ise bari meta clever ga seg when you read it it will make you happy joy you see yourself happy people will be surprised motho e tu metse ana sna next year because we are used to people Kona tshwa ba ha le fete o tla bona o tumela de wa itumela nka de wetse motho o fete wa no Itse o fete O tla le ha bua le rata le lentsitseng go bua yena ka ga ke ena hela kha o itse o fete ano Ha se na nix e ka ga hai There are people like that when they have money they talk louder than everybody It's like no one is in, in the room where they are they are the only ones when they don't have money it's like they are not there people will say ah, i thought you were at work no in security <laughs> <laughs> you must know what is happening on the next the chonne on the next hallelujah Amen. i am listening to me church is the word of god for us what it do to us when we read it the word of god what it do if we know what it do to us wow 
you will see everybody will be reading this word because you know that hey, this, people, this person knows what happen, what's happening to him. Enlightenment, joy, healing, guidance, searching. It searches the heart. It looks at the intention, the thoughts, the intent of the heart. Searches the thoughts. It corrects, it rebukes. Timothy 3, 16. Second Timothy 3, verse 16. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching. It Rebuking. teaches, it teaches us. It's useful for teaching us. It's God-breathed. God breath on it. Imagine when I'm during mass prayer when I'm here, when I breathe on the mic, people begin to vomiting the this. No, I'm not God, I'm a servant. I just follow instruction, revelation. Look now, the scriptures are God breathed. They are useful for what? No, let's read it. All scriptures uh -huh. for teaching. Uh -huh. Can you just imagine this word when you read it every day? This word, it rebuke. Uh huh. Correcting is correcting. This is not how we, you should behave, Muzalwan, child of God. This is not how you should behave. Uh huh. It trains you. Training. It makes you fit for God. You can't serve God if you're not fit for Him. Training you in what? In righteousness, in doing the right thing. You don't read it. If you knew how many things you would have corrected in your life, how many things you would have been rebuked from, by the word, without even me, a preacher, a teacher. Doing it, I should just come after. It must have done the job. I should just come to confirm but it must have rebuked you from home in your private time. It must have corrected you that what you are doing is, ro is wrong. Rebuking you. You don't treat people like this. Yes, even when you are in pain, this is not how you respond. This is the... What the word of God do to us if we know many of us If you offend me now, because I read my Bible every day, before I know it, even if before I read it, because the word I eat it, it dwells in me. After I might have some confrontation with you, when I turn my back, the word of God already start talking to me. Forgive him. Already, we have not gone anywhere. Already the word is telling me to forgive you because it's in me. If the word is not in me, it, I will meet it when I read it. The Holy Spirit is so brilliant, will make me meet a place of correction. Or I might hear it from a preaching. Yes. Look how vital it is for each and every person to find time each day to read the Bible. Before you even come to church. Before you even come here. Ephesians 4.23, 24.25. Ephesians 4, verse 23. Instead, 
Let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all part of the same body. Yes. Let the Spirit renew our mind. What does John 6, 63 say? Read for us. It says, this one says, let the Spirit renew your mind. What is the meaning, let the Spirit renew your mind? Uh -huh. John 3, I mean, 6, 63. John 6, verse 63. The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of spirit and life. The words I have spoken to you are full of spirit and life. In Ephesians says, let the spirit renew your mind. This is, our mind is renewed by the word. Tell us, say, our mind is renewed by the word. Our mind is renewed by the word. Let the spirit renew your mind. The word I spoken to you are spirit and life. This means our mind is renewed by the word. A new spirit enters us and renews our mind. It does not give us a new brain. You know, when you become born again, Everything about you is still the same. All your acts of wrong, all your bad habits, you still remember them. Your this and that. The only thing that changes is that the spirit renews your mind to think in a new way, not in the old way. That is the difference. It doesn't mean when you become born again, you don't remember what happened to you when you were seven years, ten years. No. The difference is that now, the Spirit has renewed your mind. How? By reading the Word. When you read the Word, the Spirit renews your mind. It makes you to now think in, an old, in a new way, not in the old way. What is the new way? The new way, when you hear some sound this side, boom, 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 on Friday, you just, oh my God, what time is it we are going there? That is the old way. The new way, you say, yeah, boom, 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 boom. Oh my God, there's something they say, ah. I remember time like this. When I hear this, my body will be moving like this. I, something is calling me. Now you are thinking in a new way. When you renew your mind, the old way of thinking when somebody offends you, you just burst anyway. Hey, what are you talking about? Hey, man. And you too. When the mind is renewed and there's conflict, you just keep quiet. And you remember, oh my God, I remember my old self. I will not act like this. I'm supposed to have acted very, very harsh. This is what the help word help us to do. To think in a new way to do things in a new way. How can you be a Christian and you still act in the same way you would act before you became a Christian? It means you are not renewing your mind. It is true you are a Christian, but you are not renewing the spirit of your... Mm. It has to be happening every day, renewing. You have to renew. That's how we grow. When your husband talks to you anyhow, and you just say, Hey, this is okay, Capella. Itolele, Chola, Guatata. Hallelujah. This is exactly how you behave when you are not a Christian. Now you are a Christian, you behave that way. It means you are not what? Renewing your mind. Even your husband will be saying, Hey, when? On TV. Your husband who say, I won't talk again. 
I'll slap you. <laughs> OC, remember, <laughs> remember your husband called you love. That day, you say, sister, <laughs> sister. I cannot boo, I won't, I won't repeat again. <laughs> you must know, the man is not what? Renewing the mind to keep thinking in a new way. A new way, say, be patient. Allow her to come down. Don't go high. She's high. Go down. You will still talk to her, but not now. That is the new way of thinking. The old way, say, that is, your, that is the old way. You are now something, your, your old mind is telling you that, remember women, they don't talk like this with men in your family. You have to teach this lady. Something will be calling your wife this lady in your mind. Oh, hey, oh, see, oh, see, oh, see, oh, see. No, 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 no. <laughs> Listen. Listen. If you are a Christian, look. You are a Christian, isn't it? I said three weeks ago, the biggest problem of a Christian is not going to church. It's failure to be conscious of God's presence. If you know Jesus is in the bedroom, will you call your wife or will you do that? If Jesus is in your room, in your house, even if in the kitchen, you know that Christ is here. Even, even, even if it's not Jesus, your pastor for that matter. Let's leave Jesus alone. That is too high standard. If your pastor is there, your man of God, will you tell your wife, will you do that? Will you tell your husband, will you say that? Go and dish, your, dish for yourself. You talk too much. Hey! And your pastor is in the house. Will you do that? Because you are conscious of what? Of the presence of your pastor. But your pastor is not the Holy Spirit. Your pastor is not Jesus of Nazareth. He is a servant. But look at the, the respect. It means you need to give more respect to God now than your pastor. You need to give more respect to the Holy Spirit than your pastor. Amen. That's okay. Look, I just, I'm not preaching. I'm just talking to you to say, please, in Christianity, we need to admit that our journey is very long. Fix yourself, find yourself, and stop deceiving yourself. This Bible, it will naked us and show us who we are in heart. One thing you need to know is that Christianity is not outward to inward. Many of us have done that. Christianity is inward to outward. It's not wearing uniform or putting a badge. No. It is reformation of the heart. It's not wearing uniform. Because you can still wear uniform as a Christian, but remain the same in your heart. Many of you that used to go to the same uniform. This blue, white, red, white, black and white, this and everything. Belize <laughs> ba. You know, Christianity is not wearing uniform. It's reformation of the heart. You never say Christianity. It's not wearing a uniform. It's reformation of the heart. I mean a change of the heart. It's not from outside to inside but inside to outside. Yes! True Christians 
wash the inside of the cup and the plate so that the outside may be clean. Matthew 23, 26. Matthew 23, verse 26. Blind Pharisee. I said many of us are what? Level mm, 5. Zuka. Blind Pharisees. Far seeing. But what about Lanka? Uh-huh. Read again. Blind Pharisee. Uh-huh. First clean the inside of the cup and dish. Uh-huh. And then the outside also will be clean. Yes. Clean the inside. The outside will be clean. This is true Christianity. The Lord said, blind Pharisees. Clean the inside, and the outside will be clean. It's not wearing a badge, since they spell him, or putting a uniform. No, it's reformation of the heart, a change of heart. That is true Christianity. That is true Christianity. This is where we are now. This is where God wants you to be now, your level of understanding. Let us rise up. We believe you have been blessed by the video you have watched. Follow us on our social media platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell. Like our Facebook page and follow us on Instagram and TikTok. John 14 verse 6, Jesus is the roadmap.